so that was when i decided that i'll sort of reverse engineer this process uh, instead of having to go through the interview process where i would be given a problem statement i decided to come up with an existing problem statement with one of the popular ride hailing apps uh, at that time Welcome back to Engineering Ajkal. Today we have someone really interesting with us. He started his engineering journey in Bits Pelani. He has also worked on some interesting projects, one of them being Hyperloop. His name is Prithvi Shankar. He has co-founded Arvid Stack, a boarding pass app, and he is currently working as associate product manager at Ola. So Prithvi, tell us about yourself. Uh, what is this whole journey like? from where did you start and how has it become to what it is today i was uh, really keen on uh, design and technology right and that is what uh, took me to engineering in the first place and over the course of my undergrad i sort of realized that uh, i wanted to be somewhere at the intersection of design business and technology and that is what really led me to uh, eventually you know take part in various prize incentive competitions hackathons case studies so on and so forth during college and then ultimately uh, take up a job as an associate product manager to be very honest uh, i mean i wasn't really involved in core electronics or you know the field of instrumentation as such uh, while in college right uh, although my decision to uh, sort of take up electronics uh, as as a discipline you know came more of a, more as a uh, as a rebuttal to my dad's uh, pressure of you know take up mechanical engineering and because he was a mechanical engineering him, engineer himself uh, so i said you know what like i'll do something else uh, and that's the reason i took up electronics it wasn't anything special uh, he started at bits pelani which is one of like the top engineering colleges in india so can you tell us about the whole college experience committees that were part of and like anything regarding that and as soon as i joined the uh, bits i realized that you know uh, pilani being such a remote uh, city uh, you sort of end up living in this bubble uh, of only your uh, you know your batchmates and your professors uh, and you know the real world was so much farther away from you so i took this opportunity uh, you know so th- there were things like fests college placements so on and so forth going on uh, that was when the actual outside world would interact with the town of pilani i was part of the department of sponsorship uh, for our college fests and that was the first time i was uh, i sort of got uh, an exposure into the field of marketing and creative design right and eventually in my uh, final year of college i was also involved with the placement committee uh, although i had opted out of the placement process myself uh, i i also wanted to get an understanding of the uh, placement scenario what are the companies that come to recruit freshers what are the skill sets that they look for in uh, freshers so that was what uh, led me there talk about the hyperloop project so you know you were part of this when you were in bits so first of all tell us about this opportunity like you know how did you get it like how how did you stumble upon it basically this was around 2013 when uh, elon musk had sort of uh, made this announcement for a completely new mode of transport dubbing it the hyperloop uh, calling it the fifth mode of transport uh, right and uh, sometime in 2015 uh, he sort of uh, introduced uh, this concept of a one mile long test track that spacex was going to build in front of their headquarters and invited uh, university teams from all over the world to submit designs for a scale down hyperloop pod prototype uh, which could eventually be tested on that test track right and uh, this was this was fairly exciting uh, to us back then right and uh, as you know elon musk is one of those uh, people who uh, as an engineer you would want to be somehow involved with the man's ideas right and let alone meeting him in person you want to somehow get yourself involved with whatever he is doing uh, so that was how it started so we decided to take part uh, and ultimately uh, and over the course of about a year and a half uh, fortunately we made it 
to to the finals uh, as the only indian team and among the two teams from asia and uh, eventually we made it all the way to uh, hawthorne california met the man and uh, presented our pod prototype to him so that that was a that was a great deal for us so like you know you were a co-founder of urban stack which is like a boarding pass app so first of all uh, tell us about this thing after coming back from the us uh, taking part in the competition uh, one thing that we realized that we could is that we could continue working on the hyperloop but i think that project uh, was pretty much 10 to 15 years uh, you know ahead of us uh, so what what could we do in the meantime that could uh, sort of help fix existing problems in the indian transportation infrastructure uh, so one thing that we realized was that uh, you know uh, the the current public transport infrastructure was broken right uh, the experience wasn't as seamless as you know traveling by uber and that, that is the reason why a lot of people move from uh, using public transport to opting for single occupancy vehicles right uh and that was when we decided uh you know that we'll uh, build this solution uh which was a digital boarding pass app uh, that could seamlessly work across both public and private modes of transport to integrate both uh, the payments as well as act as a gps tracking device to make uh, the whole transport infrastructure more on demand and uh, Uh, predictable and there was this competition organized by world resource institute and uh, toyota mobility foundation called uh, the stamp challenge station accessibility and mobility program uh, that we ended up winning so we uh, got this uh, grant to do this pilot project in bangalore uh, and we so we moved out to bangalore for about a month uh, pulled off this uh, pilot and then uh, we also got an interest from the delhi state government uh so that was when we moved back to delhi and then started working with the the transport authorities there uh but what ended up happening was that uh, you know things weren't moving as fast as we had expected them to and especially in something like transportation infrastructure uh i think uh, you know since we are dealing with government bodies they typically tend to be risk averse right uh so that's that's what ended up happening there and you know the entire team got uh, demotivated and we moved on to pursue higher studies and take up jobs so you are now working as associate product manager at ola so first of all you know hyperloop urban stack all are these are all transport related then you plan to join ola was it like intentional that i want to win the transport area it was slightly intentional right uh, because i think mobility and payments uh, these were two uh, areas that i was really interested in uh, right and uh, but actually when i started applying uh, i wasn't really focused on a particular sector as such uh, so when i started reading up about product management roles uh, i ended up realizing that uh, you know there is no uh, set of quantitative assessment that you can take for a particular individual to decide you know that he is a he is the perfect fit uh more often than not uh, you judge that person by giving them assignments and by un- trying to understand their problem solving skills uh so that was when i decided that i'll sort of reverse engineer this process uh instead of having to go through the interview process where i would be given a problem statement i decided to come up with an existing problem statement with one of the popular ride hailing apps uh, at that time so uh i created my own problem statement uh, broke that down into what users actually need and proposed a couple of solutions uh and designed this feature deck uh mm-hmm. and uh, and with the help of this deck i sort of reached out to a lot of uh, product managers at various companies including inmobi cred ola uber etc and uh, ultimately i got the opportunity to in- to interview with most of these firms and i ultimately decided to join uh, ola money which is the fintech vertical of ola because you right now act uh, are like associate product manager at ola and you're specifically focusing on ola money so tell us exactly like you know day to day routine what does a product manager do like and what are the things probably the tools and uh, service that you get to use on daily basis there is no average day uh, you know in the life of a product manager 
but typically how it works is uh, you know in the morning uh, you sort of sync up with your business team uh, try and try and get an idea of how the business performed the previous day um, and then get a sense of you know what needs to be what are the problems that need to be tackled uh, and then move on to you know uh, attending your daily engineering stand ups to try and get an idea of uh you know what what your engineering team is up to uh, what what is getting released and you know what is uh, what requires some certain amount of intervention uh and then you move on to having uh, discussions with your marketing and your design team to try and understand how you can build out certain features or capabilities and uh, yeah i think uh, that's that's about it and of course you do end up uh, writing a lot of documents and working on a lot of excel sheets uh like you look at data you try and gather requirements from various teams you put that together so what are the like the major skills does a like a product manager require to like do their job perfectly uh, so i think there are certain things that can definitely help uh, like being from a technical background uh, definitely helps uh right and uh, in in understanding how these products are built uh, and not just that uh, design is also an important aspect uh, of a pm's role so having some sort of a hands on experience with tools such as sketch or figma uh, illustrator etc also helps another thing is i think what is more fundamental is uh, how you how you look at problems and what kind of uh, what kind of metrics would you look at in order to uh, gauge the success of a particular feature or a capability that you've rolled out okay thank you so much prithvi i am damn sure like whatever you have said is like is going to help students who uh, like in of the future and it will help them like you know gauge their own path and understand their mistakes and learn from it thank you so much thank you so much